amazing new iPhone 8 is at AT&T, and we know you'll love it. Because we know you want more. More great camera features and more power. And more than just unlimited data, we give you unlimited plans with HBO included for life. Because you deserve more entertainment. And more spokespeople. Talking like this, saying the word more. AT&T. It's, it's time for more. Am I too close? I feel like I'm too close. Get the iPhone 8. And with all AT&T unlimited plans, get HBO for life. Only for me. Till halftime. Better have the commercials ready. I don't have my sponsor thing. Well, the soccer is just sort of picket. Never really good spaces. Okay.
Tommy. T H O. CC. Glad you made it. Ah, Ricky wins again. Oh, what is this place? Iowa. Only with maximum Pepsi taste and zero calories. Whoa. Go after the anthem. Um, yeah, go, yeah, sounds good. I usually I'm gonna turn it up during the anthem just so they yeah, know we're yeah. on. Absolutely. I wonder if somebody's gonna come up here though. I'm not gonna run camera. Did you do the game Sunday? I did. Yeah. Was it really hot? Yeah, it was hot, yeah. yeah. I mean, we came off to a great start. We're up 2-0, and then three straight goals. Two, two by a freshman, too, for, for Mississippi. I'm going to turn this up, then. Yeah. <laughs> from Pepperwood Stadium. That is the Tampa Spartans taking on the Flagler College Saints in the second game of the season for both teams. First home game for the Tampa Spartans. Hi, everybody. Jack, I go on the car. Thank you. And our microphones, a very, very windy day here in Tampa. Not what we thought we were going to get a week ago with the hurricane threatening us, but they say, um, I checked the weather, 17 mile an hour winds gusts above that. The coaches were talking about what side of the field they should take to start the half. Kind of like when they do in football, do you want the wind at your back and stuff like that? And Coach Adrian Bush said, let's go into the wind the first half and have the wind at our back in the second half. So Connor, you did a game on Saturday, Sunday I should say, a hot day. Now this place is actually comfortable. Holy cow, you said it, Jack. Let's take a look at the game time weather. 85 degrees, cloudy night here in downtown Tampa, Florida. And 13 mile an hour winds coming from the northeast. So yeah. The Saints and Spartans will have their hands full with Mother Nature tonight. I've noticed in past when we've had games like this, you watch the goalie with a, a goal kick, and they're, they're pumping the ball out 70 yards. 
and then they go the other side and they're kicking at 40. It just has so much trouble getting from one place to another. Flagler will be wearing the red jerseys. The Spartans will be wearing the white jerseys for this game. Both teams have not won a game this year. The Spartans playing West Florida and lost that game. Yeah, Tim Pippen scored the one goal with Adam Bear. We noticed that he's not the starting lineup, nursing a groin issue. So we'll monitor you on the sidelines if he's active tonight. And Flagler had a road trip to Eckerd College, went to St. Pete, and lost to start their season. So both teams looking for a win. Tampa starts with the ball. Instead, moving left to right. We'll get you the starting lineups for both teams. Well, we have this opportunity. In goal for the Tampa Spartans will be Mr. Reliable, one of the best goalies in the conference, if not in Division II college soccer, is Jake Richards. He is from Bedworth, England. And also for the Spartans is number three on defense, Snorre Court, uh, Court Lord, I should say. He is from Drama, Norway. Also starting for the Spartans is number seven, Julius Becker from Germany. Number 10 is Omar Tali. He is a sophomore from Switzerland. Number 13 is Roger Smith, a forward, a senior from Jamaica. Number 15 is Travis Foster from Tampa, Florida, Lido High School. Number 18 is Marcus Manitti from Rome, Italy. Both teams have a very international flavor to their rosters. Yeah, they do. Number 19 for the Spartans is Jan Walker from Switzerland. Number 23 is Tim Croft, a freshman from Germany. Number 24 is Ezrick Nichols, a sophomore from Tampa, Florida, Berkeley Prep. Number 25, Alex Scholz Gusterell, and he is from Germany. And the Spartans are coached by Adrian Bush in his 18th season. Here comes Flagler across. Spartans kick it away. It's wide open. Saved by Richards. Kicked away by Tampa. That one kind of got away from the Spartans as they tried to clear it. And Richards had to come up with a save. Indeed they did. And this is the first meeting between the Saints and Spartans since 2011. The Spartans have a commanding 12-3-1 record through but, 16 games. And another good look for the Flagler offense strikers coming down the field. But... Flagler's won the last two, though. That they have. <laughs> Riding a little momentum. But, you know, that's eight years ago was the last time they played, so it's hard to say. A Spartan is down, almost like he cramped up already. We're not uh, going to claim we're spoiled down here or anything, but it is noticeably cooler on an 85-degree day. It is, and for the Spartans, it's Alex Schultz Geist Table up on his feet now. Spartans are short-handed as it is, so they can ill afford to lose anybody else. Adrian Bush said that there are eight players injured, of which he said six are in critical positions. But he's told me one of the things he likes about this team is their depth. And he said they have the very next man up philosophy running on this ball club. And that is of the essence on the pitch. The Spartans have been spectacular defensively. It has been able uh, an ability to get their counter backs into the game as we have a substitution for the Spurs. Brandon Gracias, the junior from Poughkeepsie, New York. Jimmy Clark, the transfer, Red Dragons. And we continue to play. We're in the only two minutes into this game. A pretty solid non conference schedule for the Spartans this year. Had a uh, non conference or actually a preseason game against South Florida. They play that every year. I think they call it the Tampa Cup. Is that what it's called? I believe so, yeah. And they compete year in, year out. And on the push now, looking to do something where the Spartans are in their first real attack. Knocked away. Spartans did play West Florida last Friday. Flagler today, they're at playing host to Clayton State this Saturday. And then next Tuesday, they host Thomas of Georgia. And it's an early game, 5 o'clock start. Hats off to the job that Adrian Bush and his staff do. Getting the non-conference quality competition stands out to the committee. He does say what 
what their schedule has done is every game is critical because they're all region games. The only time a uh, non-region game or these games wouldn't matter is if you just outright win your conference. Spartans trying to get the ball, dashing away on the run. Here come the Saints making some noise, moving into Spartan territory on the push. Quality one-on-one -on -one look, but Ezra Nichols back to Jake Richards to avoid any trouble. And we've played about five minutes or so, and both teams getting a feel for one another. To be expected. The other thing is, both teams are still trying to find out what they've got as far as personnel goes. Coach uh, Crank to Cranks told me that he has 16 new players, only two returning players on his squad this year. Now, that's that's somewhat normal now that he's a second-year coach that it starts with a shot goes wide. Somewhat normal when you take over the program. He's in his second year, and he said some of it's just players move on. And so he said a lot of them moved on, some graduated, brought a lot of new players in. Adrian Bush said he likes this young team. He says it's a young team. He said we had a good freshman class last year. We have a really good freshman class this year. I said, are you afraid to play freshman? And he said, I'll put the best players on the field to make this team win. Roger Smith in a battle here for the Spartans as they are moving into same territory like the through ball. Now a volley as they migrate down the field. Spartans coming in from the left. And nice job by Flagler to keep it away. And they do keep it in bounds. Spartans able to stop that. Come back on the attack. Right side. Nice cross pass. A shot the goal. Exceptional play there, Roger Smith with the final touches. With the Spartans moving the ball side to side down the field, that's beautiful offense. That was a picture perfect play. The assist, I believe, will go to Omar Tali as he set up the Spartans. Smith to get the goal. It is a Spartan down. And it is Tali. Yeah, he took a big hit there after he made the pass, but lots of build for the Spartans on here. 5.45 in the first period. Let's see if they can capitalize right now. Everything going their way. And for the Saints, try to settle down and really get a feel here at Pevin Stadium. No, oh, they gave it to. Who did they give the uh, assist to? Julius. Julius Becker was it. Yeah. Tali got the hockey assist. The Spartans <laughs> moved it side to side everywhere. and Nothing you can really do there for Flagler as they were caught off guard following the turnover and the yeah. Spartans sharing the ball, giving up a good look to, for a better one. Yeah, we could see it unfolding right in front of us, and it was just two good passes. And then Smith knocked it home. Spartans from the side. Flagler trying to come back the other way. Stopped by the Spartans and then crossed midfield. Windy day continuing. There were uh, some sprinkles about two hours ago, and I talked to one player, or I should say one of the coaches came across the uh, Howard Franklin Bridge, which goes from St. Pete inland toward Tampa, and he said it just poured as he was crossing the bridge. But it's a sunny day here now, which is very windy. And there's a lot of movement on the soccer ball. You can see with the throw-ins and yeah. the dribbles thus far, both teams having to play very 
physical, yeah, yellow pie, yellow pie, no surprise there, too much physicality, me and Shaher. A yellow card has been issued to flight winners number 16, Shaher. An opportunity for the Spartans, let's see, they're a th triple threat now with Walker, Nichols, and also adding into the equation is Kraft, so do not expect the Spartans to take a shot here, but rather send one into the box, maybe a header perhaps. Looking for Smith, you know, that almost was timed right. I like the design of that play right there, it's a one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter with one of the fastest guys out there, Roger Smith. Yeah, I had people leaning the other way. And then isolate a player to go left. As I mentioned, the Spartans will play Clayton State this Saturday. And then Tuesday, it's Thomas, Georgia. Then into the conference schedule at Bury, the number one, the defending national champions. Always a good program, men's and women's. Cross goes all the way out, and the Spartans will throw in from the sideline. And these are the games early in the season that will dictate how far the Spartans can go because you highlighted on a good point of both of these teams are still trying to figure out what you have and, and your identity. So to get that early goal can only help the Spartans mentally. It's right in the defensive predicament now. Goes out, Spartans will get bound it. Spartans only had six practices before the first game. And the NCAA didn't cut back took some of the practices. Away. Flagler actually lost four practices because of Hurricane Dorian and uh, its crazy way, working its way toward Florida, then missing Florida. And he said they really got nothing. They got some rain and a windy day, but uh, they all had to evacuate. Flagler down the side. There's the cross, headed away by Tampa. Travis Foster has it taken away from him. A couple Spartans go to the turf. You're right, Connor. They're not afraid to knock anybody down today. Not at all. On the pitch, they're playing aggressive, and Spartans answered that aggressiveness. And uh, right now, if you're the Saints, have yet to get anything offensively. And now another turnover by the Spartans. This could be costly. Smith in the open field down the left side. They rode him off the play. season but the Spartans they got out to a, a, uh, a lead last game against West Florida and, and they know just how long of a game it is they had to play 109 minutes so we're, uh, we're north of 10 minutes now and a lot of soccer still to play right by the time it gets there with this wind. Connor, I must say you are very versatile. You're doing the, on the pitch today, last weekend, I saw you doing volleyball. We've done baseball, we've done basketball. I think you tossed in a little lacrosse, right? I Softball? Yes. Exciting time. I want to hear you do a cricket game. Hey, why not, right? I, I, I don't know if you have three days to devote to broadcasting a game. Competition, you know, I mean, competition <laughs> it really is one of the, the best things out there. And looking on the field today, you can already tell this one is not going to disappoint between no. Flagler and Tampa. Two talented teams and these athletes, well conditioned, seeing it's flow, flow game flow that's allowed both of these teams to get up and down the field. And that's partly due to the wind. These, these players have to feel good. And earlier today, it was just dreadful how young it was. Yeah, now going away, the Spartans from the left side again. Has an opening. 
finally ridden off the play. That was Foster. That was one of, about his second opportunity to get in. Smith keeping a close look. And that is Osland. Foul call on the Spartans. Flagler quickly gets it into play and the referee says too quickly. Love this shot though this time of day. What a beautiful shot of downtown Tampa skyline. You and I do baseball games and we do games about this time of night and ball field is about 100 yards to our left and we get a similar view on game day. Flagler, left footed shot. Jake Richards is there. And the hand-eye coordination there by Richards. Keeping his body balanced, hands, feet parallel to the ball, making it look easy with the stop because that was a one hopper. That was not an easy quick pick there, but the Saints still threatening deep in Spartan territory. And again, they've got it. There's a shot, and it just goes wide. Nice play. That was Dan McGuire in the lineup now from uh, Durham, England. Wow, that had goal written all over it. Yeah, this angle it did not look promising for Tampa. But the Spartans the, catch a break there. I mean, you talk about a matter of issues, right? This roster for Flagler, just working your way down. It's Italy, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Israel, England, Florida. We're allowed that. Brazil. Germany. Another Brazil. Another Sweden. Bolivia, Finland, I don't know if we said Finland before, a couple from Jacksonville, West Virginia, Spartans have an international player, but I don't think it's that bad, that, this conference is known for that though, so it's a very attractive conference, and the coaches, typically the coaches I've found have pockets of the world that they like, this one seems, uh, Coach Crank seems to be all over the place, so he does have a, a little Scandinavian uh, area. I mean, my, oh my, the recruiting all of these programs do, and you said the Sunshine State Conference, and it seems like in every sport, yeah. top to bottom, all of these teams getting players from across the country and not even limiting themselves to the United States. Well, we both know it's the premier Division II conference in the country in most every sport. You had the uh, pleasure last week of broadcasting a... Uh, Volleyball wasn't a tournament, but almost like an invitational, I guess it was. Yeah, the the 2019 Courtyard by the, Marriott the Volleyball Champions. Classic. Yeah, so it's actually a, it's at the, the University of Tampa and at Florida Southern over in Lakeland. So it's a combined tournament. So it gives opportunities for teams. As we will have a whistle here. It is one of the few whistles we have had thus far. It's going to be on Julius Becker. Continuing on, uh, it allows all teams to get exposure. Mm -hmm. So for the University of Tampa, they, they entered the, the pre-rankings number one, Concordia St. Paul's fifth, 17th ranked with the Jennies of Central Missouri, and then Valdosta State's out there, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. So, so teams have, have shown the ability to, to challenge themselves in the early going of the season. And they're currently now in the Colorado or the Tampa Sports volleyball team, so they're just continuing to see new talent Sailing way over in the bar would have been a good field goal in football. Speaking of that, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in action oh, tonight. Oh, yeah, right. Carolina Panthers. Impressed by how the Spartans have dictated the game. They have, yes. Yeah. They've made the tackles necessary dribbling down the field and fancying a quality performance. 17 minutes. Spartan setting it up. Nice crowd here tonight. We had a good crowd last week for the women's game. Women, though, unfortunately, off to an 0 2 start. There's a pass down the left side. That is Smith. See if he can put the move on. Waits for a teammate. 
finds his teammate. Nichols dancing around near the corner, finally just lofts it out of bounds. They may give it to Tampa. You mentioned the crowd, Jack. It is exceptional here. Yeah. Thanks to everybody for tuning in to TampaSpartans.tv. What an atmosphere. Cannot get any better here. Tampa Spartans, Flagler Saints, both of these teams trying to find their first win of the young season. And O'Connor, you're also involved with the women's basketball team as a manager. I know they're not into a practicing yet, but are, as a manager, are you into helping with some off-season conditioning and things like that? Correct, yes. Uh, not officially beginning practice yet, but starting to get acclimated with, with the new players. Uh, a lot of new freshmen, transfer players, as well as the men's team. Uh, but the men's team is almost an entire reload. It is, and... Uh, I think the message for, for both teams right now is there's minutes out there. So both of these programs challenging the players out there, it, it's up to you to be the best player you want to be. No one is given anything at this stage. And uh, I love everything about it. I think, uh, I think we're going to see a lot of, of unknown in the early going, but that's to be expected. It, it certainly was the case for the, for the opening volleyball weekend. There's going to be a lot of mistakes early yeah. by both teams in, in every game. Uh, but all in all, I'm just super excited for the season, and I think both teams have a lot to, uh, to build off of from last year. Flagler now in control, doing a pretty good job, seeing if they can cross, knocked away by Tampa. Another attempted cross, scooped up by Richards. Tampa won, Flagler nothing, Spartan scoring at the 545 mark of the first period, Roger Smith. I have a feeling this is by design, but every time Jake Richards has had a chance to kick it away, he has not tried to punt it away. He's just kind of moved it up to the next, next player. Because of the strong wind, I think he realizes it's not worth it. So we'll see in the second half if he does try to send it downfield farther. Spartans may be offside on size for now. Yes, stayed indeed. Outside. It's craft with an opportunity and oh. just met you, misses it to the right. But how about the Spartans there? You talk about staying passive. They take a shot there and yeah. they got a look. I, I mean, it was a one on three, but, but deep in the uh, same territory, it gives them something to think about as we move forward in this game. Talk about the two goaltenders, Andrea Lubia and Jake Richards. For the most part, they've they've been able to dictate this game, and the front line of their defenses has played a part. Another Spartan going down at 22 or 23, 23. Tim Croft, and he is in pain. He went up with a Flagler player on the kick. That went beyond midfield. They both went up together, and I don't know if he came down. I think he might have come down wrong or on the foot of the other player and rolled his ankle. So we will take a quick timeout while we have an injured Spartan. Get a quick word from our friends at Enterprise. At Enterprise Rental Car, we listen. And we've been listening for more than 55 years. To customers and employees. In fact, it was an Enterprise employee who came up with the idea of picking you up when you need to rent a car. It was a great idea. At your house, at the repair shop, we'll pick you up. Wherever you need us, we'll be there. Listening, let us show you what that means. Pick Enterprise, we'll pick you up. One to nothing, Tampa on top. Off to an out, the Spartans did spring two new players in. See if we can get those numbers for you. <laughs> Pass 
it gets away from the Spartans into the hands of the foot, I should say, but Richards with the stop. Time and time again, Jake Richards, fearless in the bag. Dawson Stevens with the shot. Richards getting a little pressure, working with Snorri Courtguard. Now, despite the Spartans having the lead, critical to stay aggressive here because in about the past five minutes or so, the, the Saints have taken full advantage of the Spartans' conservative play. And now, with a throw in here, moving it towards the middle of the field, Spartans with Nichols moving to Roger Smith, electing to pass forward. Whoa. No nope. nope. call. No whistle. Oh, yes, he did. No, he didn't. He said play on. Looks like he got blindsided from behind, but we play on. Eddie Fumar, a lead official with the call. Spartans then get it out of the way, and a chase. Nice job by Tampa. Good run by Julius Becker, but just came up a split, a split second short. And Jack, we talk about it with umpiring and baseball. Same thing with, with officiating in soccer. Just more consistency. That's what we've had thus far. Both teams know that there is no room for flopping here. If you're going <laughs> to flop, you're, you're going to get left behind, yeah. and, and the play is going to move along. And that's what you want to see. Yeah, as long as you know that's the way it's going to be called. Out of bounds, Spartans will get the throw in. Now they're giving it to back to Flagler. Two different breakdowns. Richards with five saves on five shots on net. Lubia without a save thus far. Of course, the Spartans had that one look. They've taken three shots, two off target. But for the majority of this game, it's been in Tampa territory. Let's see what they can do. Yet another turnover, but getting it right back are the Saints. Saints have run that play a number of times. They really have it down. There's one that just about went through the box. But they've uh, worked that play. Once they get it into the box, they have a pretty good offensive scheme. And it's given them a number of opportunities. They seem to know where each player is going to be. The Spartans can shift the ball from the right to the left wing. Travis Foster. One of players off the bench looming over here. Could be a threat to get across. And now a delayed whistle will give the ball back to the Saints. We're a little more than halfway through the first half. Tampa one, Flagler nothing. Spartan scoring within six minutes of the game. looking for that opening. And kick back out. And you highlighted the quality of looks that the Saints have gotten just yet to find a rhythm. If yeah. They're getting everything they want. They're just unable to get the f finishing touches. And that's uh, accreditation to the Spartans getting in the passing lanes and another no call so yeah, they let him play on Spartans now need to pick up their their offense and they catch a break as we will have a goal kick so Jake Richards will kick it away this time he does kick it out And now they revert back. Oh. 
reverse field and coming up from the left side. Spartans have it in midfield. And now we'll go out of bounds right at midfield. Flag over with the toss. Both teams have committed three fouls thus far. Toss in, taken away by Tampa. Notice that even though the wind is strong, that it's favored one team or the other at this point. It's a chance for Flagler. Tries to center it. Duke waiting. Back deep in the box. Straight on. Kick deflected. Spartans kick it away. And they will get the first corner kick of the game coming up to Flagler. And I'm surprised Dawson Stevens, the red shirt freshman from Round Hill, cannot take that shot from the right wing. It's about eight to ten feet out. That angle. Yep. Set his teammate up for success in the middle, but there was traffic. Yep. They were right there, but there's a combinations of Spartans and Flagler. They've had two or three looks here at that. Looks, yeah. The Spartans have had to hold their breath and certainly not out of the mix here. There's the kick. Headed away by Tampa. Kept into the box. Again, still controlled by Flagler. Cross, headed away. Spartans having trouble. There's a whistle, and Tampa will get it. But some pressure from the Saints. Salama wanted a whistle the other way. It was a tug match there. But... More often than not, when you're in the opposition's box and it's a wrestle match there, it's going to go against you. Yep. Headed away by Tampa, taken away by Flagler. We said this a number of times. Flagler gets it deep. Tampa charging the other way. They try to hit Smith in stride. Not able to. Whistle there on the tackle as the Saints defender did not let Becker follow through. He was taken out. Now a free kick doing the honors for the Tampa Spartans. Taking advantage of it is Croft. Right wing knocking on the door to no avail. <laughs> That pass got through, but I think it surprised Croft. It did, and it, and it was one of those sequences where the Spartans had three defenders in the middle, middle end of the field. I think Croft was surprised. He liked to uh, take a short pass. And got Salah. Look at Breu on the field. Freshman from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. That's a soccer crazy city. Substitution entering number nine, Owen Pumsley. Maybe take, it, number take away the word soccer and it's a crazy city. Indeed it is. And now the junior from London, England, Owen Pumsley on the field for the Saints. Spartans ride the ball out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Flagler. One corner kick at this point in the game. It's the toss. Headed up 
by the Spartans, still controlled by Flagler. In the box, Sox tipping a couple. It's one on four. Gets a shot deflected just wide. Students, where do you remember to place your tickets in for the raffle before the end of halftime? Well, if they wanted the one two punch, Richards positioned where he needed to be. Apparently, it was off a Spartan, though, as it was shot wide by Albert Cooper but deflected off a Spartan and a corner kick for Flagler. There's second, this one from this side. First time up here, Evan on the ground. Flagler controls, shot deflected away by Tampa. That's exceptional work by the Spartans that time and Croft sacrificing your body. Get the ricochet and you have 13 minutes, 20 seconds left in the first half. Sparks with a throw in right by midfield, off, but over the head of the intended player, but an unsuspecting Flagler player had hit him and go out of bounds, so they move it up about 15, 20 yards and do another quick throw in. And Flagler's opening game in the first half against the Eckerd Tritons had three shots. They've manufactured six thus far and five on net, but the Spartans and Jake Richards have stood tall. And here comes a goal kick for Richards. Wind is still gusting. So... Sorry, substitution entering number 12, Josh McGrath. Replacing number 10, Omar Tali. Omar Tali replaced by Josh McGrath, a sophomore from Hayward. Flagler player going down quickly was Owen Unseely. A little sportsmanship there to help him to his feet. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see a card there. I think uh, Nichols went in. It was, just, it was rough, us. but not dirty, I think. Yeah, it was a clean tackle, I think, where Ponsali really took the brunt of the impact. He was flipping over and landing awkwardly on his back. He's all good to go. Handled well there by our lead official and play resumes. That ball hooked its way out of bounds. Nobody got a shot at it, and it'll be a goal kick for Jake Richards. Nearing 11 minutes left. First half, Spartans beating the Saints, courtesy of the Roach A. Smith goal. The fifth minute of play, his first goal of the season, and third is a Tampa Spartan. Connor, I know you're a senior this year, and you've been around the athletic department for your whole career. When players come in like this from all all parts of the globe, you know, and you probably have classes with some of them, do you do they you know do they adjust well? Is it a big culture shock to them? Or yeah, I think uh, once everybody uh, gets adapts to to uh, to Tampa, it, it really is remarkable the community we have here for all the athletic teams. Uh, top to bottom, uh, just an outstanding, outstanding atmosphere we have at the University of Tampa, and I think it speaks for itself when you look at the, the results year in, year out on the quality of these teams and, and what they're able to do with all the Sunshine State Championships and, and competing at the national level, and uh, and beyond that, just great people that are going to go on to succeed to do tremendous things uh, following graduation. And we, we, of course, were, were fortunate enough to, to cover all the Tampa men's baseball games. The Spartans get a look deep in there. And they do it about as good as anybody else, uh, them as well as the, the Tampa volleyball program. As The Spartans knocking on the door. Labia, what a stop there. Andrea Labia, the Italian, showing off the range to get there because the Spartans had a prolific chance there. It was a dashing Spartan, Luca Abreu to no avail.
field by the Spartans. Do they have a chance? Kicked away. Well, that almost looked like they collided noggins there. Apparently not. Under 10 minutes now. Ball goes out of bounds. And Tampa controls. Back to Jake Richards. Flagler with the steal coming down left side. In the box, a couple of players knocked away by Tampa. Kicked away by Tampa. Almost a miss hit by the Spartans. They can let it go whistle. Got to put some play on. Nice kick by the Spartans to Smith. He's got some running room. That's a teammate. Finds another teammate. Here they come. But Flagler, good defensive play to take that one away. Both teams maximizing spacing on the field. Spartans get the stop and then frantically the Saints last bit of defense able to come up with another stop and here come the Saints but not before Ezra Nichols nice play by Nichols to get that one didn't want to send it out of bounds and give him a corner kick and he just guided it over to a teammate nice move on the side pulling on the jersey and let's see how the call goes going to do here. He went looking in his pockets. He got a yellow card for Flagler. It'll be a yellow card going against Isaacson. Isaacson pulling at a play of the jersey as he tried to break away and then they went tumbling to the turf. Certainly intentional and what a move by Abreu. Creating the separation. There's a shot. Goes just wide. How about the scene here, Jack? We have a uh, University of Tampa athletic marketing involving the crowd, the student section over here. T-shirt toss. Getting loud. See just how much you want to make a fool of yourself to get a t-shirt. Well, the word free <laughs> right there. Free yep. t-shirt. Yep. Oh, sparks of excitement in uh, <laughs> a lot of spectators, nonetheless. Six minutes to go, first half. Tampa on the right side. Well, we have a moment, Jack. Soccer, a game that is growing so rapidly here in the western part of the world. Do you think as we continue to progress uh, at the MLS and, and of course the other levels, do, do you see the impact play continuing to, to evolve uh, in the United States alone? I, You know, as every generation gets used to soccer. Oh, here's a chance for the Spartans. Does he get it? A uh, foot deflected Ooh. wide. Ruby got his hand on it and deflected across the crossbar. What a look. Wow. You know, when my generation was growing up, you know, when they had covered wagons and things like that, you know, soccer was very much an international sport. And then, so you needed a generation to have it become part of their culture so that the, when they pass it on, kids grow up with it. And my generation didn't really grow up with it. And I think that's an interesting point because nowadays, 
a lot of youngsters are starting to play one sport 12 months a year. Do you think that that's beneficial? Obviously, there's a lot of ups and downs. I say no, that it's yeah. beneficial. Oh, what a play by the Spartans. How about that? Threading the needle. Wow. A thing of beauty. <laughs> that was electric. From the left side, the Spartans with four minutes, 32 seconds, take a two to no lead over the Flagler Saints. It came down on the left side and it took, as you said, a perfectly threaded pass. The play was ruled offside. The goal was oh, called. offside is called. And that was a late call. I, uh, initially, I thought it might have been offsides, but like, like we said, they were celebrating and, and there was no reaction by the Saints. Well, let's try it again. <laughs> oh, the ankle breaker. Oh, there it is. <laughs> And I believe Roche Smith will get credit as I believe it hit off a flag or saint on the cross and went in. If that is the case, that's Roche Smith's second of the game. We'll see what they're congratulating Abreu. Well, hey, Abreu was in the vicinity. Yeah, yeah there were a couple. And he would have had to have just made any contact to have gotten credit. So we'll see how it scored. I don't know. They almost caught Flagler napping. Here's the call. Abreu. Smith to Abreu. So now it is two to nothing. Well, I tell you what. It was like, you take that away from us, we're going to just get it. They came back quickly there. Took about 15 seconds, almost a similar play. And the Spartans not missing a beat. They get the offsides call, could have hung their head, not at all. Yep. Within the, a matter of seconds, they answer. And here we go. Another man pass that. for the ball. This game has been pretty wide open. Both teams are not afraid to put it out there. Flagler has been very good in the box. The Spartans have been very good when they bring it in from the side. Spartan substitution entering number 27, Philippe Giesen Linsen. Philippe Giesen Linsen, the sophomore from Austin, Texas, back on the field for Kraft. And Adrian Bush has utilized his bench exceptionally well thus far and largely in part to a 2-0 Spartan lead as we were under three to go in the first half. And he said he wouldn't be afraid to do that. Well, one thing he was telling me, and you may be aware of it, I don't know if the other sports do it, but he said they, the players are wearing a GPS device on their chest and it monitors all sorts of metrics including how much running they have done and, it, and how exhaustive the running has been and he said they have metrics that they watch and when they reach a certain amount they get a warning from somebody on the sideline that you might want to rest them for a bit and i mean this is what sports has gotten to <laughs> ladies yeah. and gentlemen how cool is that i mean we're at the point where where science has taken over the game and, and you're right we're seeing it pretty much at every sport from from a varying range of levels and i think it's i think it's great because but well, let's take, for instance, in your average soccer game. You're running multiple miles. Yeah, he said about thirteen to 15,000 meters. Yeah. Which I may translate into four or five miles. Right. So it, it, no longer can you tell a coach you're tired. He'll tell you when you're tired. You may not think you're tired. He'll tell you you're tired. And the saying I love <laughs> is, there is a place if you're tired, and it's called the bench. Yeah. You, you, you can take a rest. Yeah, and that's not the worst fine. thing because... There, there are a lot of players on, on this roster for both sides, and why not? Give, give an impact while you're on the field. If you're tired, have somebody else come in and compliment you. Well, I know when I was growing up, high school, it, well, here's a nice corner deflected away by Richards. When we played basketball, it was like embarrassing to tell the coach you were thirsty and needed some water. We didn't have water bottles on the benches. We'd run to the get one. And now, because, you know, real men didn't drink, need water. Yeah. 
<laughs> Different times. Oh, oh man. my god. That Gatorade came out. Oh. That looked like it was going the other way. Final minute, 45 seconds now left in the first half of a 2 0 Spartan lead. That one's going to get away. Spartans will get a toss in. 30 seconds to go in the half. Spartans have played 44 plus minutes of sound soccer. It's yeah, not have. been pretty at all, uh, at every at every instance, but they they found a way to grind through adversity, and they found an opportunity to to score two goals, and they take full advantage of it. No rush whatsoever. This is, this is one part of the game I find discouraging. They had 30 seconds to get the ball in, and they're not even gonna do it. Three, two, one, zero. It's, it's part of the rules, part of the game, but... Oh well, we made it to the end of the half. Tampa picking up a couple goals, one from Smith, one from Abreu, and they lead 2 to nothing over Flagler. Connor and I will step out for a little bit, come back just before the start of the second half. 2 to nothing. Tampa leads Flagler, the home opener for the Tampa Spartans. We'll be right back.
And we're a few minutes before the start of the second half. Flagler has taken the field. Jack I, Connor Moore, still waiting for UT to come back out. Two to nothing, Tampa leads. We'll be back after a word from a few of our sponsors. Ricky wins again. Oh, what is this place? Iowa. Only with maximum Pepsi taste and zero calories. Whoa. Hello. Whoever said that less is more is more or less mathematically challenged. Less isn't more, it's less. And the only thing more than more is a lot more, which is exactly what I get at Embassy Suites. More space. More downtime. More family time. More me time. More me time. More me time. Because the more and more I have, the more I have to have more. More room, complimentary drinks, free breakfast, Embassy Suites Hotels. And both teams have come back on the field. Tampa 2, Flagler nothing. As Connor and I have mentioned, a really strong wind here today will be in the favor of Tampa in the second half. It's, it's been anywhere from 13 to 20 miles an hour during the game with gusts even higher. Flagler had that advantage in the first half. So it didn't appear to impede Tampa coming down the field. Yeah, balanced game. Both teams with six shots. Five on goal for the Saints. Three for the Spartans. One save by Andrea Labia. And uh, three by Jake Richards. Been spectacular. Both teams committed eight fouls. Four corner kicks, particularly in the latter stages of the first half. Yep. For Flagler, just one for Tampa. Spartans have been offsides three times. And yet to go off size are the Saints. Just seconds away from soccer, Spartans will look to rectify their first, uh, first half performance with another 45 minutes. One of the offsides actually took a goal away from Tampa. And then they came back 20 seconds later and scored. On the field for the Saints is Lobia Oslin Shocker. McGuire, Salamoa, Isaacson, Ortiz, Gutierrez, Koskinen, Sapp, and Zek Pastiak. And we are underway. Second 45 minutes. Jake Richards kicks that one away. That one gets away. A chase for the balls. Smith chasing it. Gets it to Lobia. Flagler now coming forward. Nice deal by the Spartans. Here comes Tampa. Smith, nice pass on the side. A shot, a goal immediately. Took 30 seconds and the Spartans are on the board. Three to nothing. Umar Tale, and how about the vision by Roche Smith? He had a good look for a shot of his own, but he passed it up for a great look from Tale. And the Spartans firmly in the driver's seat leading three nil. Every goal has been a little bit different, but they've all been, you can just see them developing. And it's only game number two of the season. This could be the coming out party for the Tampa Spartans. Yes. Three goals by three different players. Spartans on the attack again. A 
Hobia has to dive on that one. Spartans with three pretty goals. When you look at the, all the attempts Flagler's had, they've had some pretty good attempts, but usually it's been a matter of the Spartans have been able to get in the way before the before it was too good an attempt. They, they worked the ball around very well, but then the Spartans kind of shut it down just before they got the quality shot. Indeed they have, as we'll have a whistle free kick for the Spartans. Looking back on that first half for Flagler, they had their opportunities at about a 10 to 15 minute window there in the mid portion of the first half, but every opportunity was matched by the energy of the back line defense by the Spartans. And hey, give credit when credit's due. Jake Richards in the back side over there makes some saves and the Spartans knocking on the door. OBS watches that one go wide. One thing that you have to adjust to, and I think that might have been the case there, is how strong this wind is, and it's going to blow any ball just a little bit further away than you think it's going to be. Yeah, I mentioned at the start of the game there were 10 mile an hour per winds, and we are now up to 12, so... Playing a factor on the field here at Pepin Stadium, Spartans possessing it. And you may not think that's strong until you're actually feeling it here. It's not Hurricane Dorian by any stretch, but a little nice give and go by Tampa. Now a chase. It's going to go out of bounds and a throw in for Flagler. There's nothing wrong with that pass there by the Spartans, leading three to nil. Good through ball on the same page, pinpoint accuracy. And now the Saints will look to make a move, but they turn it over. They come back, three Spartans convert and take it away. Fire down. Yeah, starting to get chippy out there. It might when you give up a goal in, 30, in the first 30 seconds of the half when you're down two to nothing. Could lead to some frustration. And when the breakaways aren't there, it's understandable. They're right there for the Saints. Monumental opportunities. But the Spartans have answered the calling. Still have 41 and a half minutes, of course, to complete the performance. But they are where they want to be at this stage in the game. <laughs> Another Spartan goes down. And those Turn are plays the there that will define the starting point to the end of the season because those are the plays just getting on the same page with the teammate there. Spartans looking to come away with the takeaway that they do. As we mentioned, the next game for the Spartans is Saturday against Clayton State. Connor, are you on the call on that one? believe so. Should okay. be here. Okay. You better check if you think you are. <laughs> Looking forward to that contest. I know I'm not. Okay. <laughs> we will miss you dearly, Jack. It's no, always no, a won't. pleasure to have <laughs> such an intelligent mind here calling oh, the action. Along. I don't, do I owe you money or something? <laughs> <laughs> you have photos of me? <laughs> Maybe back in the day. <laughs> Well, you're, you're in your senior year, and you know what? Uh, we'll talk probably during the baseball season, and you're going to say, weren't we just doing soccer not a long know, time ago? Oh, my goodness. How the time has flown by. Oh, yeah. my God. And excited for the future, as should these two teams, as it has been an entertaining contest. 3-0 Spartans leading, and quality soccer here at Pepin Stadium. Jake Richards with the ball, and Adrian Bush told me, he said, he will have a pro career after he's done here. And that's no stretch. That is, yeah. It's really not, because he's that good. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's definitely got the work ethic. And that, You uh, know what? That's what Adrian kept saying. He said, he's not what you might think a goalie would do and sit back and just kick me some balls and I'll, you know, I'll stop him and stuff. He said, he, every sprint, every drill we have, he leads them and wins them. 
and he leads by example, and he's been a motivating factor for a young, fairly young team. And that's a point we'd like to highlight on as the Spartans are threatening here in Saint territory. Let's see what they can do. Cross coming forward. Kick it. And knock down. Try it again. A little high just over the bar. That's the look they want. <coughs> It'll be a goal kick for Lubia. And to go off that, Jack, Yep. the Spartans here, and this is mainly a, a point about collegiate athletics in general, if you want to play at this level, you need to be a leader. And I think that's right. the difference between high school and college where you, you can you can play and contribute and, and maybe not be that vocal leader, but there is that expectation that when you put on the jersey and you take the court or the field that you are going to be there as a teammate and as a leader, of course. And I think that's something to be said for every young player on this team as they have a part and they know their role. Mm -hmm. Little turnover. Flagler has a chance to move it up, but kicked a little too hard. I know we're early second half, but Flagler has not had the opportunities they had in the first half. There's one. Shot, go! I should keep my mouth shut. Yeah, Henrique <laughs> Salama, and let's see. No, are they calling it off? No, it's a goal. An excessive celebration, perhaps. No call, and now Salama has his moment, and wow, what a, a work of art it was. It was, it was. It was. He was uh, corralled by three Spartan defenders, but he juggled it for a time being, caught the volley, spun around, and delivered a terrific kick yeah. that bounced him back in the net. It had only been eight minutes, but they, they hadn't had an opportunity like that since, you know, the, the latter stages of the first half. They get one here and convert it. Henrique Salamoa, the first goal of the season for the Flagler Saints. And we got ourselves a ball game 3-1 to one here at Pepin Stadium. That may motivate Flagler. They still need two more. But here they are on the offensive again. Knocked away by Tampa. Taken away by Flagler. They've got a chance again. Do they get the cross? No. Nice job by the Spartans. It goes out of bounds. It'll be a corner kick for Flagler. So it sets them up well. There's a point of emphasis right now for the Spartans. Perimeter on ball defense at this point. You know that the Saints are going to be aggressive, trailing by two in the final 36 minutes. But take advantage of it. Oh, oh, it's a 3-2 game. Wow, has Flagler turned the corner here. And it starts with a pass, and then Italo Fichata coming down the middle from the lane. And the Flagler Saints back-to-back -back goals to Brazilians. 36-38, Spartans defense having a meeting there. You, yeah, you're talking about a few minutes ago, Jake Richards being a leader. He called the team over emphatically, demonstrably, talking to his teammates. Salomão and Machado have made this game extremely interesting in a matter of minutes. So I tell you what, you look at some of the, the ebb and flow of this game. The Spartans had a goal taken away when it was called offside. Didn't let it deter them. Came back and scored 20 seconds later. Then the Spartans quickly score within 30 seconds of the second half. And you'd think with a 3 nothing game, maybe it was over. But Flagler has bounced back with two goals within two minutes of each other. Flagler goes up by number 14, Italo Lacciato. The assistant number seven, Dan McGuire. The yellow card has been issued to Tampa's number 13, Roger Smith. So Roger Smith granted a yellow card. And here come the Saints. And now they field. can see themselves nodding this game up. There's a pass, and they call offside.
So from a two to nothing halftime lead for Tampa to a quick three to nothing lead, 30 seconds into the half, and now within eight minutes of that, it is a 3-2 game. Pivotal for the Spartans. Continue to put your foot on the gas pedal. Some running room here for Tampa. To the left side, crossed, out of bounds. Spartans may get the corner kick. And I believe they are. So it'll just be the second corner kick for Tampa. Five already for Flagler, the last one, resulting in a goal. Smith waiting right by the corner. They may just pass it into him quickly to set up an alternate play. They do. He crosses, headed away. Spartans retain possession. Dropping it in, headed out. Kicked up the sideline, it'll go out, and it'll be a throw in for Tampa, about 10 yards into Flagler territory. Brandon Gracias. Now are they changing it, or are they subbing, or just having a new, uh, just changing players? McGrath now, analyzing, going back to Gracias in his own territory. 34 minutes left in regulation. An elegant first half by the Tampa Spartans has been met by 12 outstanding minutes here in the second half. Two goals by the Flagler Saints. And we are currently in a 3-2-2 matchup here at Pepin Stadium. Flagler across midfield. Kicking it up forward, headed away by Tampa. Retained by Flagler. Jake Richards has to dive and deflect one off. That's the first time I believe Jake has had to move laterally. All the other kicks have made him go up or down, but this time he had to go side to side to make the save. By far the biggest save in the night by, uh, by Richards because if he and does I think not, that would have gone in the corner. It would have if he does yeah. not get a piece of that. and He does just enough to get a piece of the ball, force a corner kick, but the Spartans are far from out of this jam. Spartans able to deflect that corner kick away, and now they're off to the races. Kicked up the left side. Looking for some running room. Has some space. Has two players there they find off to the right side. Getting the ball to Dolly. There's the cross, a little too hard. And it'll be a goal kick. But those are the looks that will win the Tampa Spartans the game. Being able to pass the ball across the field like that. You saw all of the open green grass on the field there and they had a look but unable to land the cross. And now the Saints with an opportunity moving downfield. Out of bounds, far side, throw in Flagler. They waste little or no time tossing it in. Spartans just kick it out to midfield to allow everybody to regroup. Far side, a little slide out of bounds. Flagler will throw it in. Flagler with some numbers again. Kicked away by Tampa, popped up by Tampa. Retained by Flagler, outside the box, crossed, taken away by Tampa, and they move it quickly upfield. <laughs> A little tugging going on there, and finally they say that uh, 
Pek Koskinen was pulling a little bit too much. Important part of the game for the Spartans, even if you don't score, would like to penetrate the middle. Both of their goals have come when they have migrated down the field. And they've gotten a quick hitter, so let's see what they can do. Just a through ball there, but the ricochet, favorable bounce. Shot goes wide. And a goal kick coming up. Lubia guides it in front of his own goal. Bouncing around. Almost taken by the Spartans. Now they do get a foot on it. Trying to get some running room. Flagler player rides him to the ground. That was uh, Vichiato. Two players getting in each other's <laughs> head right there. Vichiato yep. talking to Thali. Spartans do get the free kick. Yeah, and this About is 30 not out. outside of Julius Becker's range. We are going to see a Saints ball. He has now joined opportunity for Kraft and the way, but the Flagler defense prevailing in an open lane moving downfield. Dan McGuire pushing the pace. Still has some room, changes direction, loads it, but it goes way wide. Instance there, player trying to do a little bit too much. He did the job getting it downfield, but he had two teammates running down each side of him. Could have been an opportunity. The Spartans will live with that shot attempt. Richards sends it off to the right, the left side, I should say. Back to Richards. He's getting pressed. Kicks it out toward the Spartan bench and over the bench. The Spartan fans, it's time to watch our friends Jess, Melissa, Nina, and Amani shake their booties for a chance to win a prize from Carabas. Here's how it works. They have 30 seconds to jump, shake, and wiggle eight feet paintball balls on the Phoenix box. Are you ready? Three, two, one, shake. Spartans will get the toss in. Far side of the field in front of their bench. And out of bounds again. And Spartans move about 15 yards up and will do it again. Looking at the stat line, two breakdowns that have sort of canceled each other out are the 14 to 8 fouls for Fag Flagler in comparison to Tampa and the 6 to 2 corner comparison. So both sides have had opportunities with free kicks. And then, of course, for Flagler here in the second half, they've capitalized on those corner kicks. Spartans tried to give and go there, but the player had already left the area. Stand. Matter of fact, five of the first six games this year are home games for Tampa. The only away game is to start the SSC season at Barry, but then they come home and play Eckerd and Embry Riddle for conference play after that. Lubio with an acrobatic save. Yeah. Tampa with a chance to set it up. 
kicked away. It'll go. Does not go out of bounds. Does go out of bounds. Tampa Strikers applying pressure both offensively and defensively, and that is going to be what it takes if they want to come out victorious. Jake Richards coming well out of the box to redirect and start this play. Out near midfield on the run. Back to Richards. Shot knocked down by the Spartans. That was from about 30 yards away. Spartans deflected it anyway. Now a little running room. Becker in open space. Passes it off. Kicked away. Spartans will throw it in. Heads up play by Salamau to kick that out of play to force a throw in rather than a corner kick there. But the Spartans, everything you want to see in that play there, they get a stop. No hesitation to push it downfield in transition. Waiting for the throw in. And headed away, but the Spartans get it back. Wisely sets it up. Spartan still control, gets it on the foot, a shot deflected off the crossbar. Still, Tampa has another kick, goes wide. That one was deflected by Lubia off the crossbar and back into play. One that the Spartans wish they could have back <laughs> because that was everything they could have wanted and more. But again, when they have gone with those cross-field passes, they have had the looks that has put the Saints in tremendous adversity defensively, and the Spartans have had all the looks they could have asked for. Tampa takes it away. They may have some numbers here. They reverse field, go to the left side. Lubia ranges over, gets it, kicks it toward the sideline and actually kicked it out of bounds. Spartans will throw it in. Halfway through the second half, a 3-2 soccer game. It was 2-0 at halftime, Tampa. Tampa scoring within 30 seconds of the second half to make it a 3-0 game. And then within about six minutes of that, Flagler scored twice. So if you thought maybe the Spartans had delivered the knockout punch early in the second half, they did not. It has been anything but that. The Spartans were well on their way to victory, but there has been zero, and I mean zero, <laughs> letdown by Flagler. Right. They have competed to, to the premium, and the Spartans have had their hands full, but they have answered the calling. And the predicament here where need to continue to execute these passes. On the flip side, what do you think the Saints need to do, Jack, to continue to chip back away in this game? Well, probably exactly what they've been doing, but they've got to keep the Spartans from getting things like this, some pretty wide open looks. Here it is, fires a shot, and a goal. So you ask what they shouldn't do? <laughs> Well, there was almost a blindside block that there was no call. The play continued, and the yeah. Spartans do not miss a beat. Their fourth goal of the game and their fifth of the season. So the Spartan offense coming out and putting forward a clinic tonight. Umar Tale again. The second of the game. Unassisted goal. 
And head coach Adrian Bush will give the entire team an assist there. Because yeah. That was a play where it came from nothing. They, they got a takeaway deep in their own territory. And four players helped trip away. And the Spartans get an insurance goal now ahead 4-2. to two. Spartans also made four substitutions after that play. You look at the benches on both sides. The Spartans have, look like they have maybe 20 guys over there. Flagler has about 10. So with 21 minutes to go in the game, Tampa back to a two-goal lead. So Flagler bounced back after falling behind by three goals. Now they're back to a two-goal deficit. They rallied the last time. Cannot reiterate enough the intuition the Spartans are playing with. They are fearless and another opportunity here as McGrath will look to track it down in the right corner. And they get the corner kick, kick. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The fourth of the check that third of the game for the Spartans. But they've been engaged every play, even when they've turned it over. They have not missed a beat. And chance here, clock becoming a factor as we near 20 minutes left. Keep it simple for the Spartans. <laughs> Keep the ball on this side of the field and continue to attack. Opting to just get it in play. And Flagler took it away to stop that attempt. Nice job keeping the ball in play. Spartans still retain possession. Surveying the field. Numbers say keep it on the right side. Nice job by Flagler to take it away. They have a chance. Waits, lofts one into, and wow. Looking to thread the needle. There's Bonsole right there as Richard comes away with it. And Yellow the card coming card. out. Yes, indeed. From Eddie Fumara. Third yellow card of the game, second one coming out on Flagler. Fumara, Bobko, and Rokaina. Actually, it's on Jake Richards. So two yellow cards on Tampa, one on Flagler. Under 20 minutes to go now. Out of bounds, Tampa tossing it in. For the Saints, looking for that player on the field that can add the spark. It will not be easy. <laughs> and a big swing wow. there. A lot of the fans <laughs> here, that was dangerously high. Yeah. That, that boot, and it will be a free kick for the Spartans and company. Here we go. The yellow card was issued to number three for Tampa. So I believe that will Sorry. be for, guard. for Richards. I was a little confused myself when it was reported that it was Richards. Did not see anything from him. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I trusted him. Cross. Richards stops it. Takes his time. Scoops it up, playing a little cat and mouse there. And that's Jake Richards being Jake <laughs> Richards right there. He is going to force the Flagler strikers to make him get rid of the ball. Why not? Yeah. I like the, the little cat the, and mouse game, game, like you said. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Offside called. 
and there really was no question about it as Philippe Giesen Linsen was about two feet off sides there. As we near 17 minutes to play. Almost gave that one up right in the middle of the field. But Flagler comes back the other way. Osland. Richards waits again and picks it up. <laughs> there is no rush for the Spartans and until the Saints start to present more energy, they will have no problem continuing to milk this clock. Couple subs coming in for Flagler. Of the six goals we've seen this for, a lot of them have come off the quick hit or break. Yeah, it, yeah. It's been moving quickly down the field and you catching get, them off guard yeah you numbers get, game you get the feeling that that is going to be what it will take for the saints to start a rally we get a whistle flagler did score one goal off a corner kick but you're right most everything is spartans have had a couple opportunities on quick breakaways flagler got one off a breakaway and for all you soccer fanatics, how the Saints scored that goal on the corner kick was spectacular. I mean, the ball put on display by McGuire, it, the tail spin it had on it, and then the dash right down the middle from straight away from Salomar. Just spectacular. And let's see what we can do here as the Spartans will take over under 15 minutes to play. Cool, crisp night here in downtown Tampa, Florida. You can tell we're spoiled. Cool, crisp night. It's probably 81 degrees right now. Everybody else would be talking about, I wish it would be that warm. It's been really hot here, though, I'll tell you that. That it has. During the day, it has the been. The last few weeks. Exceptionally hot. Not that anyone should feel sorry for us, but when Hurricane Dorian came in, oh, Spartans pulled down from behind. Dorian did not come at us. There's a yellow card coming for the pull. Well, it's what you like to see from Abreu there as he got up off the field, gave a brotherly hug there to Stevens to make sure there's no bad blood, and then goes over to lead official Fumara, <laughs> maybe trying to prevent a yellow card from being issued to no avail, but you like the sportsmanship. That's such a big part of the game. And now he makes a steal. forgotten, yeah. Centered. Lubia picks it up. But as, as I was saying, Hurricane Dorian did not really affect us, but when it was working its way up the East Coast, it forced a uh, this hot weather to just stall over Tampa. And it was, even though we're used to 90s this time of year, we were getting upper 90s and extreme humidity. My daughter and I were out riding a bike on the... Uh, bike path near our house or the the uh, trail near our house we saw these people running and we found out it was an ultra marathon and we were, we were up near Tarpon Springs they had started down by Tropicana Field in St. Pete they were 38 miles into a 46 mile run on a 95 degree cloudless day sounds like true inspiration <laughs> right there I thought it was true insanity I think a little bit of both probably <laughs> I mean, 40, Fair to say. 46 miles, if it was 60 degrees, is a lot. Well, you have to have a little daredevil <laughs> oh. in you to, to be able to pull uh. something like that off. That's wow. for sure. But Nobody looked like they were having fun, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Spartans on the run. No offside call. Oh, and he just punched it a little too far forward, and Lubia redirects it. Too much on the touch there. But for Flagler, there's 12 minutes, 30 seconds. You're trailing by two. At what point does the urgency clock tick off and, yeah. 
And you see the attack. I don't know. Maybe it's coming forward now as the Spartans defensively creating havoc. Well, the one thing, is that the urgency may be there, but the Spartans aren't letting him do anything about it, for one. And that's got to be deflating. It is never easy to win on the road. Winning right. on the road, regardless of the sport, regardless of the level, it takes a lot of composure, discipline, trust in one another. Dominic Coniglio on the field now for Abreu. Blackmoot substitution entering number seven, Dan McGuire, replacing number nine, Owen Poncelli. Coniglio, one of the freshmen from Tampa Catholic High School. From the side, as a chance, sets, back out. Finally shooting it, but wide. I think one of the Spartans cramping up down on the field. Seems to be like pulling at his uh, toes to stretch the calf muscle. This will be Requesting. the seventh corner for Flagler coming forward. But we have an injured Spartan on the field. We'll take a moment to get a word from our sponsor, Mr. Empanada. You are listening to Tampa Spartan Soccer. We'll be back right after this. serving up scrumptious empanadas in convenient Tampa Bay locations. Mr. Empanada. 4-2 Tampa leads. Jack Ike, Connor Moore down to 10.54 to go in the game. Tampa leading Flagler. Both teams playing just their second game of the season. Both teams looking for that first win. And Tampa's got some running room and maybe some numbers. One man to beat, another man for Flagler trying to come back, and he gets there. Spartans get it. What? Only a goalie to beat. The shot saved by Lubia. Cut down the angle, and a Spartan goes down. The Can't see the number, but it's the player who passed. And I believe that was Coniglio who had the shot. So he got a quick entree into the world of college soccer. Side to side action. Not missing a beat Spartans now. Spartans had the great breakaway, but it ended up being too tight of an angle. It did, and it was almost a situation where you might have liked them to slow it down or cross it before pulling the trigger there and taking the look from that angle. Spartan down. We'll take another break. We'll be back here at Pepin Stadium right after this. So the injury is over. Flagler will get the goal kick. Still four to two. Now in thirty-three to go in the game. I'm God Salah replaced by Trevor Stanley, the freshman from Jesuit High School. Another local product of a class that Adrian Bush said is a pretty good one. 
He said we build on a pretty good class from last year. Bright future for the Tampa Spartans soccer program. Showing why leading 4-2 to two as we are now under 10 minutes to play. Spartans will get to throw in far side of the field. Flagler running out of time but has the ball. They reverse it to this side of the field. Back to the center. Popped it in the box, headed away. Shot deflected by Tampa. Oh. Sliced it instead of hooked it. Well, the wind <laughs> again playing a premier factor. And who knows where that ball maybe ends up on a different night. Yeah. Fortunate ricochet by the Spartans. And now Jake Richard can take his time. And he will do that. Fumara with the whistle now telling him to speed it up. <laughs> Punches it well over midfield. Taken away by Tampa. Quickly to Richards pursued but he punches it out again and a foul called on Flagler both teams with eight shots on goal And we are under eight minutes to play. Spartans defense looking to stand tall as they are currently on pace for their first win of the season. Yeah, they got a little dose of reality about six minutes into the second half with a three to nothing lead. And I think that is only going to help this team continue to improve because there's no value in just rolling over another victory. You, there needs to be adversity and there needs to be obstacles throughout the game. Is believe there will be a whistle. Yes, indeed, yeah. be awarded to the Spartans as that was a 50-50 ball. A little too much shoulder action by the Saints. And it's time and score, right? At this point for Tampa, there's under seven minutes, so there's no need to take any unnecessary chances. Right. Just stay in position, play fundamental soccer, and everything should be just fine from there. Whereas if you're flag, this is the time where now you, you have to take chances. chances. You yeah. take chances, you got nothing to lose. Playing with house money, you get a breakaway, you get a breakaway, try your best to capitalize. Otherwise... There's a cross out front. Oh, we'll be able to save. But a, they stopped it. Offside yep. was the call. But yet again, another look for the Spartans. Whereas the Spartans would be content to run the old four-corner offense. Flagler's got to take some chances. Kind of pinballs between players there. Five and a half minutes to go. Tampa right at midfield will get a free kick. We might have a correction on the clock. 
Let's see if there is a change. Yeah, referee went over to the official scorer's table. 5.35 is the new time, so we added six seconds. Spartans with it at midfield. Understandable for Chris Cranks right now. Every second. You are correct, yes. Flagler player almost goes sliding into his bench to keep that ball in play. And now the Saints have it. Taken away by Tampa. Looking for that open player. Back across midfield. Spartans just eating up valuable time at this point. And another player down. And they've done a phenomenal job here in the second half after the two unanswered goals by the Saints of controlling time of possession. The Saints have not had many chances, but here they come. Nice stop by the Spartans. Coniglio, the freshman, saving the day in the box. And the Spartans not out of it yet. It will be the eighth corner kick coming forward for Flagler. They, as we mentioned, they scored off one earlier from the other side. Let's see what they do here. Turn it around, headed away by Tampa before it got too close. Flagler players surrounded in the box. Finally just kicked that way by Tampa into their own bench. Four minutes to go. Down the middle, and two Flagler players thought each other was going to take it, and they both ran away from it. Cannot say again the job by the Tampa Spartans contributing when they were shorthanded. Till Newman, healthy scratch. He had the, the lone goal of the season thus far in the opener against West Florida. Nursing a groin injury, but that did not stop the Spartans for propelling tonight, Omar Atale with two goals. It's been an X factor thus far. And the Spartans, three minutes away from their first win of the season. We played 87 here at Pepin Stadium. Just sending one all the way down, forcing them to get it. One thing Adrian Bush said is he said, we've got about eight players not healthy, six of them in critical positions. And he said, but you probably won't see them play. He said, we could play them if we had to. But he said the extra two days of rest, you'll probably see him Saturday. He and that right there. Two days are very important. Is when teams come together mm -hmm. because. They still had enough firepower. Yeah, there is going to be some problems throughout the way. People are going to go down. It's just a part of the game. But overcoming difficulties is where a team makes their makes their indentation and expect expectations are high for the Spartans because they are that that good and they have that much potential to take their take this team to new heights as, as the season progresses shot from wide just goes wide Jake did not get a hand on it but it went wide by about a foot on the flip side the Flagler Saints have been this close on several occasions to making this game a brand right. brand new equation. Only two goals, but they have had the chances to add a lot more so, to that. Actually, they said Jake may have deflected it because it's a corner kick for Flagler. Here we go. But a low liner easily kicked away by the Spartans, and they're going to get to the ball first with a minute and a half to go. A little bit of running room. A little more running room. Spartans with some numbers. Coming in toward the box. Waits, centers, picked up by Flagler and taken away. Minute 10 to go in the game. Oh, 
One minute remaining in regulation. One minute. Knocked out of bounds. Spartans will get the throw in. 50 seconds to go in the game. Tampa is going to pick up its first win of the year. And more than likely a 4-2 win over the Flagler Saints. Tampa will go to 1-1. One one. Faithful here at Pepin Stadium showing their appreciation. A fine effort by the Spartans. Fancying a complete effort. As they are just seconds away from the victory, nearing 30. Last gasp here for the Saints, moving across midfield. That'll pretty much do it. If there was any chance they were going to get something quick. 20 seconds. Tampa Spartans next in action Saturday at 5 p.m. against Clayton State. Should be a dandy. Nine. Seven, six, Big time win five, for the Tampa Spartans. Four, Find three, themselves one and one on the year. Five, zero, there it is. Tampa wins it for two over Flagler. Two goals in the first half. A quick one to start the second half. Then two by Flagler. And one last one by Tampa to make the winning margin two. And the final score four to two. So Tampa now 13 and three against Flagler all time. Flagler had won the last two games, but they had not met since 2011. So the Spartans back in the win column against this Peach Belt Conference team, the only Peach Belt Conference team not in Georgia. And how about the Tampa Spartans behind Rogier Smith in 69 minutes, one goal, two assists, and Omar Tale with two goals in 55 minutes. Julius Specker, Travis Foster adding assists of their own. And Luca Abreu, the freshman, also with his first career goal. And the Spartans just find a way to get it done. The Flagler Saints did not go down easily, yep. but the Spartans prevail. 4-2 is the final, so we will see you on Saturday, 5 o'clock, right here when the T Tampa Spartans take on Clayton State. So for Connor Moore, this is Jack Ike saying thanks for joining us, and we will see you Saturday afternoon.